Hello everyone. Welcome to the session one of the training. <clears throat> that is introduction to cyberspace and hacking. Today's table of content is introduction to cyberspace, data and information, hackers and hacking, types of hacker, motivation of hackers, need of hacking and securing. So today we'll be discussing all the basic concepts which are required for us to understand. Let's move towards introduction to cyberspace. Cyberspace is a concept describing a widespread interconnected heterogeneous IT electronic devices and technology, which means even if you're doing any kind of transaction online of the money or any sort of data or information is considered to be a part of cyberspace. Imagine the connection of IoT devices, that is Internet of Things devices, where you are sitting at your home and sending messages to the refrigerator or any other electronic gadget, which you have made the connectivity with the help of certain sensors that are classified under the concepts of cyberspace. This expression of cyberspace dates back from the first decade of the diffusion of the internet. It refers to the online world as a world apart as distinct from everyday reality. In cyberspace, people can hide behind fake identities as in the famous The New Yorker cartoon. Basically, when we talk about the cyberspace, everything and every IT electronic device which has a power and tendency of connecting and communicating with other devices on the internet can be considered as a part of cyberspace. We are dealing in each and everything of the cyberspace, for example, using your mobile phones, smartphones, your laptops, your server, your desktop, anything. Uh, can be a part of a cyberspace. When someone talks about cyberspace, information security and digital technology, now these two things should be the first thing which comes into our mind, that is data and information. When we talk about data, data is unorganized and unrefined fact. Data is an individual unit that contains raw material which do not carry, carry any specific meaning. We know that every single entity of data would be having certain meaning, but in which context that meaning is referring, we really don't know. Data doesn't depend on information. It is measured in bits and bytes. Raw data alone is insufficient for decision making. Why we talk about data, now let's talk about the information. Information comprises proceeded, uh, process organized and presented in a meaningful context. Information is a group of data that collectively carries a logical meaning. Information depends on data. That's why we say collection of data in a meaningful context or a meaningful sense is known as information. Information is measured in meaningful units like time, quantity, etc. Information is sufficient for decision making. Now here comes an example. Since we are talking all about cyberspace and further we are going to talk about uh, VAPT, web application testing, network testing, information gathering, recon and enumerations. So let me take an example, a very clear example uh, of data and information. When we do recon, we find someone's password, but we really don't know what's the user ID and where to log in. Now that gathering of password is considered as a data because we know there is this password which will be having some meaningful context, but in which sense or in which reference, we really don't know. But on the same hand, when we are able to find a URL where we can find, uh, where we can enter the specific password as well as the username, which we have collected in our reconnaissance phase, gives a perfect meaning and gives us what we actually needs to do. So classifying from P1 to P5, which are 
the critical vulnerabilities from highest to the lowest gathering just the password that is the simple data can come under a p2 category whereas logging via the same password with a username or an email id on a certain specific url will be considered as an information and can lie under p1 that is the critical vulnerability now let's proceed about types of information when we talk about different different types of information there are four different types of information which you can categorize any see any sort of information in these following categories such as the very first one is your personal information second is sensitive information third is financial information and the fourth is economical information when we talk about personal information it refers or it contains the entities like your name your address even your dna's sequence or dna's information sensitive information is something which can be categorized as your credentials your uh, debit card or credit card information or any sensitive office office information or official documents financial information always deals in the sense of money which means whenever you're talking about any sort of money let's say which is in your bag which is in your wallet which is in your atm or which is in your bank or at your home can be considered as a financial information the last side type of information is economical information economical information means the assets you hold which defines the economy or the state of the economy of yourself or any oneself like the assets you hold like properties loans any sort of insurance etc can be categorized under economical information now let's get back on the very first type of information that is personal information in the year of 2017 my heritage got breached where almost 92 million accounts were breached what were in these account there were the information of person's dna every single american's dna was present in this breach now you might be thinking what would be the benefit to someone uh, who is doing any kind of breach of personal information the answer is pretty simple let's say in the case of my heritage dna breach information an attacker can craft a biological weapon and can deploy against that person or if someone gets someone's private person's address they can ship certain anti social elements to their home while they will be making arrangement uh, with the police so that they could move to their house and can arrest the person Let's come upon the sensitive information. Sensitive information in major cases is considered as the credentials or banking or debit card information such as no one can give their Gmail's account or any social media's account to anyone else. No one really shares their credit or debit card information with an unknown person. If they will do this mistake of sharing this sort of information the possibility of them getting bankrupted is 100% when we talk about the financial information there are so many people sitting behind the computers for gaining or for gathering someone's financial information so that they could craft an attack in later on phases same goes with the economical information now we are pretty much clear with what is cyberspace with what is data with what is what are different types of information now the question comes from whom do we need to save this information of ours the answer is pretty much simple we are talking about those persons about whom media stories keeps on telling us that is the hackers not exactly the hackers but the bad hackers will be understanding those bad hackers later on in the session 
but first let's understand who a hacker is or what actually the hackers are a hacker is a person who takes advantage of vulnerabilities to exploit and breach the device and leak the respective information or data with or without permission now you might be thinking with permission without permission without permission we have heard but but what is with permission let's say i have opened an organization where there is a huge network in which all the devices all the sensitive information is communicating with other devices present inside the network i ask person a or i am giving person a permission to test my network and to tell me where my vulnerabilities are there the person a will be considered as a hacker but he is doing all the hacking with my pers- uh, permission with my consent or with a legal contract whereas there is this person b who gets jealous of person a that how could he get the permission where i am also a good hacker now he will try to take his anger out by hacking my network and leaking all the data online without my permission without my consent without any contract with me so here it comes as an illegal art of work so when we talk about a legal art of work or legal hacking it means there is a whole sort of permission a contract is been done a nd or mou has been signed by both of the parties both of the parties as in the person who is doing the testing that is a hacker and the organization who has hired the hacker or the tester whereas when we talk about without permission or illegal hacking it refers to the person who is doing the hacking or testing without my consent without my per, uh, permission and this tie kind of act is considered as an illegal act or a criminal activity so i hope till here we are pretty much clear about a hacker about the information about data about different types of information now everyone of us might have seen a hacker in the movie but very few of us might have seen a hacker in a real life versus a hacker in the real life so there is a paradox which is going on a trade off which is going on named as real life hackers versus real life hackers in movies we see a hacker who is quite fast in typing whose room is quite dark there will be a black screen and green font and he will be typing s- something on the keyboard for few seconds and he will be getting or prompted with a message as access granted so in movies they usually show certain kind of simulators like check here in the screen itself uh there is this a simulator it's an online simulator where you keep on typing anything a random key and screen to pre- give you a common meaningful sense or certain meaningful lines of code and when press certain key it's going to say access denied keep on typing uh something new and press another key combination it's going to give you access granted same way we have got one more uh or sim- one more simulator with us which is quite similar to the previous one but here the thing is you will get so many themes and colors here more graphical representation of the things more of the things which you will love to see again i will start typing with certain random keys on my keyboard uh, with my closed eyes and one hand it's, and it's again going to give me certain combination like this press certain combination it's going to give you a uh, certain message and according to this uh, according to the uh, this simulator press again few more keys give another combination it's going to show you access granted it's going to show you these kind of uh, prompts which will give you a meaningful movie like simulations over here 
like these kind of things like launching certain nuclear projects or nuclear missiles on any country or accessing some uh, some interpol's database and searching for some terrorist named as nikolai or even generating some uh, secret uh, security alerts along with it prompting some noise of it whereas uh, in movies they usually show a uh, hack uh, uh, drone has been linked and it's ready to kill so in movies they show certain things but in real life when we talk to a hacker hacker is going to tell us that it usually takes very good amount of time to hack it's not like you are going to hack anyone or anything in just fraction of seconds or in just fraction of minutes in real life hacking do really need time hackers usually say that we have waited for certain amount of time for our precise hack or for a uh, certain hacks which is at a very difficult level so most of the time they says we have spent that much amount of time in just gathering the information then planning the attack and then drafting and deploying the or launching the attack in the real life now we are aware about real life hackers versus real life hackers so movies they usually use certain sort of simulators or any sort of simulations for showing you a very presentative and attractive effect but in real life it isn't like this so moving on the basis of real life we have got certain categories of hacker or known as types of hackers there are three different categories of hackers which are white hat hackers black hat hackers as well as the gray hat hackers depending upon their work they have been categorized as white hat hackers black hat hackers and gray hat hackers let's talk about first our white hat hackers these are the good people they work under some legal contract with permission as well as the consent of the organization they never breaches the data or they never leaks the data they breach and exploits the device for which they are been allowed to breach it and they will report to an organization for which they are working for they work towards the security of an organization with the specific knowledge anyone can become a white hat hacker it's just like the white collar job second is we have got black hat hackers they are really very bad people they are the real deal on the internet they usually bring chaos and destruction in the cyber society as well as in the cyber space they do not care for anything they just care for only one thing and that is money which means give me money and i will do any sort of thing which you will ask and which is in my reach or which is in my limits so give them money and they will do give them money and they will do any sort of work which is related to, to related to cyber crime and hacking which is in their reach and limits next we have got examples of black hat hackers like kevin mitnick adiana coke new lizard squad kevin mitnick serves almost 5 years of prison for hacking into national us national defense database after his release from prison he started his own organization second is adiana cock she is the creator of mobile malware named as the zeus which keeps on stealing your banking information your personal security questions and will trigger it and will send them to a attacker then we have got new lizard squad it's an israel group of people who are quite good and proficient at performing dos and ddos attack that is denial of service as and distributed denial of service respectively so they all are about give me money and will do anything for you next we have got gray hat hackers 
Now these grey hat hackers are the combination of both white hat as well as the black hat hackers. They are just like the whistleblowers. They will exploit the device and organization or even network or any kind of service without your permission. But the good part is after exploitation, they will report to the organization that how this is how we breach into your device, into your data or into your network or infrastructure and that's how you can patch them up. Now these kind of hackers are also known as bug hunters or bug bounters. They work towards the security of the society. They always think that the hacking is for the good purpose and they usually leak or reveal the dirty secret of the organization to the society. For them everyone is equal and they don't care about the money. Example of them is Julian Assange, Edward Snowden, the anonymous. When we talk about the very first per person listed here that is Julian Assange, he is the creator of the most known website named as wikileaks.com. Now this organization or this group or this website is all about the dirty works of the politics of or, or any organization which has been really revealed by some anonymous person but Julian Assange gave them a platform to post the things. He will ask the persons to send all the leaks to him and will upload it without tagging the re uh, revealer or without tagging the person who has leaked it so that it could be known to every single one of us. Now you will also find many interesting leaks over here like during the presidency election of America which were between Donald Trump and Miss Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton's account was hacked. All of her private email servers email are posted right here. So you just need to scroll on under the leaks section. You will see Hillary Clinton email archive. Open it and you can feel free to browse through any of her email by just typing certain keyword. Let's say search Obama and you will be finding all the emails which are sent to or sent from Hillary Clinton's email and which contains the keyword Obama. If you will just open any of this email, you will be able to read the whole thread of mails listed in that specific section. The second person in this category lies Edward Snowden. He is ex NSA employee where he was given the task to surveillance all the personal life of the civilians to find some malicious or some terrorist activities. Now one day he came to realize that if he is monitoring someone's personal life there might be someone who is monitoring his own life. So he went out of the country and contacted the guardians for the specific interview and revealed whole thing which he was doing. Now the last name that is the anonymous I think I don't need to give any sort of description about them. They are pretty much famous that's considered as the online largest cyber army which works towards the good and security of the society. Now let us understand what motivates people to hack or why do people hack. There are so many reasons why do people actually hack. Major of these reasons are listed below. First one is knowledge, then second one is research, third is money, fourth is revenge, fifth is security and the final one that is the last but not the least fame. Now when we talk about the knowledge section of why do people hack, there are people just to check out their knowledge they will start hack, they will join bug bounty platforms they will join bug bounty programs where they can test their own knowledge and skill and apart from it 
if they want to gain knowledge they will gain they will gain their knowledge from those platforms too second one is the research people like us what we like to do is we like to do research on the basis of which we can develop a product product which can be used in the market by the organization so research is the ultimate way to check your knowledge out just in case of an attack which was launched uh, launched in 2018 named as blue bond attack that was the result of research of certain organization third section is money money is the section which comes for many categories such as black hat hackers for the sake of money they will start hack or certain times bug bounders or bug hunters for the sake of money they will start hack and start reporting to the organization then there is a revenge it's one of the funniest category that when a person wants to take revenge when he is not given the credit in an organization will start exploiting his own or her own organization just to seek out the revenge in most of the cases we have seen uh, there are weak links in the organization like weak employees who are not given exact credits or they have been getting scoldings from the reporting manager for each and every part second part in this revenge section is some love birds they i have seen so many couples in my life where when they get apart from each other they will try to hack each other's social media accounts or even try to hack into someone's whatsapp just to check out with whom they are chatting or to whom they are texting now there comes one of the best part of why do people hack for securing it is a quote in our cyber domain that is you cannot say you are secure unless you don't hack yourself which means for providing security hacking is necessary the best example is an organization xyz wants to secure his own organization or their own organization they will hire certain pen tester just to check out how much secure they are or what are the things which are needed to be patched that organization or the hired pen testing or penetration testing organization first will try to hack them and then they will ask them to deploy certain patches over a certain product protocol or certain version of the softwares which they are using last but not the least <coughs> excuse me there comes a category named as fame fame is one of those category where hackers hack into certain organization just for the sake of fame one such example is zuzu hacker let me show you uh, some uh, some image about zuzu hacker so it's one of the most common he used to deploy vodafone's zuzu images all over the website just take certain seconds few seconds to check out what's been written on their website once zuzu hacker has hacked into them so after hacking into the website what they have launched is trying to connect to try sorry, trying to connecting to 127.0.0.1 connecting successful hello admin you got hacked by zuzu this website status hacked admin where is your security oh you don't have security website successfully hacked don't forget us zuzu so this organization that is zuzu hacker always claims to others that they hacked into website and that's their signature move signature move as in after hacking they will leave the signature of their identity so that they will be getting fame so these are various reasons why do people hack 
Now let's come upon the major section of this talk or this session that is need of cyber security. The ultimate thing is everyone of us wants security. We don't want our privacy to get evaded. We don't want someone else to see the information. We don't want anyone else to be checking with whom we are texting what are the credentials of our social medias and other stuff that's why our hacking or securing is necessary but there are certain specific section where we can say in this section there's a need of cyber security the very first section says types of cyber attack every day new attacks are getting being launched like it hasn't been even a month there was an attack named as log 4g that was a zero day vulnerability a zero day vulnerability is something which has never existed before so that was a zero day vulnerability and it shook whole globe with the attack second is increase in cyber crime that's true since the technology has increased the rate of cyber crime has also increased every day we come across certain news which says someone's account has been hacked someone's bank balance has been reduced or debited by some other parties without their concern someone got bankrupted in certain scams so there is a increasing rate of cyber crimes everywhere across the globe every one of us are considered to be tech users because we are using technology every day technology as in we are using our smartphones technology as in we are using laptop which are connected to the internet and since they are connected to the internet they could be vulnerable to any type of cyber attack or they could be prone to any kind of cyber crime every one of us information is stored in a it electronic digital device either on the cloud or on some hardware or on a server or some database or even their own system so there is a chance if they are connected to the internet every one of us are vulnerable to certain specific section of the cyber attack if a proper security has been deployed in an organization they could save millions of money millions of money as in let's talk about the breach which happened in 2017 which we talked about in the earlier session that is my heritage 92 million users data was breached so imagine what would have been the cost of that database and where the reputation of my heritage has been going down towards the ground so with the help of cyber security or with the deployment of proper patches and security many breaches can be saved but major of the organizations are not aware about it also enables credibility malwares can be always harmful which means there are so many categories of malwares across the globe like we have got virus we have got trojans we have got key loggers we have got worms we have got ransomwares let's talk about specifically one category of malware that is the ransomware which hijacks your system and asks for money in other words this category of malware will kidnap your system or server or even your network and they will demand for certain sort of ransom money which is not a small amount of money just imagine again coming to the fifth point could save millions of money there is a section of the whole web that is the dark web where all the illegal activities are getting being conducted with the help of proper deployment of cyber security those illegal activities can be minimized i am not saying can be completely eradicated but they will be minimized every organization's 
pillar are built or depend upon this concept that is named as CIA triad. CIA goes as in confidentiality, integrity, availability. These are the three basic pillars upon which the security of an organization, reputation of an organization depends. C means confidentiality, which means the data which is shared between two parties should always remain confidential. Confidential as in it should not be shared by any of the parties without any other's consent. Let's say I am a trusted user of Facebook. I am trusting Facebook while I am signing in or authenticating in to my account that Facebook won't share my information with anyone without my permission or without my consent. Integrity is one of the best way to check out the another term in cyber security named as data tampering. When we talk about this term that is the data tampering which means the data which is in the original form should be delivered in its original form without any slight of change inside it which means data should not get tampered or uh, any data which is tampered it means it is violating the rule for integrity then there is the term availability available means if i am availing anyone a resource the then the resource should be available throughout the workout or throughout the project itself so in short when I talk about this CIA triad that is confidentiality, integrity and availability, these are the three pillars. Re let me repeat it again. When we talk about the confidentiality, confidentiality refers to an organization's effort to keep their data private or secret. In practice, it's about controlling access to data to prevent unauthorized disclosure. Typically, this involves ensuring that only those who are authorized to ha have access to specific asset and that those who are unauthorized are actively prevented from obtaining access. As an example, only authorized payroll employees should have access to the employee payroll database. Furthermore, within a group of authorized users, there may be additional So there may be additional more stringent limitations on precisely which information those authorized users are allowed to access. When it comes to integrity, in everyday usage, integrity refers to the quality of something being whole or complete. In information security, integrity is about ensuring that data has not been tampered with and therefore can be trusted. It is correct, authentic and reliable. E-commerce customers, for example, expect product and pricing information to be accurate and that quantity, pricing, availability and other information will not be altered after they place an order. Then there comes our availability system applications and the data are of little value to an organization and its customer if they are not accessible when authorized users need them quite simply availability means that network system and applications are up and running it ensures that authorized users have timely, reliable access to resource when they are needed. Many things can jeopardize availability including hardware or software failure, power failure, natural disasters and human error. Perhaps the, well, the most well known attack that threatens availability is DOS that is denial of service attack. I hope 
this will give you the basic or this might have given you the basic idea of the introduction to cyber security and cyber space now as for the wrap up i want to show you a small video about the secret life of the hackers what society thinks about hackers what hackers are what hackers actually do and what are the things which we need to understand about the hackers which of these people is most like a hacker a burglar a vandal an inventor or a spy the answer completely depends on whom you ask because the word hacker has taken on all of these meanings and more over the years but it's the wrong question it's like asking is a chisel something you use to break into safes to deface buildings or to carve statues no the questions we should be asking are what is hacking and why do people do it in the broadest possible terms hacking is creative problem solving that takes advantage of the properties of things in unexpected ways so when galileo used curved glass to magnify the stars that was a hack or when nasa engineers saved apollo 13 with a book a plastic bag and a roll of duct tape that was a hack of course usually when hacking comes up we're talking about computer hacking but the idea is the same computer hacking is just creative problem solving that takes advantage of the properties of computers and networks in unexpected ways for example phone providers used to use tones and beeps to get their phones to communicate with their networks what they did not expect was that hackers would figure out that those tones could be imitated with toy whistles found in captain crunch cereal boxes thereby bypassing the need to pay for the call so why do hackers hack many are driven by intellectual curiosity they want to learn how a system works to discover its quirks and hidden secrets they are like cave explorers who venture into darkness and see what they can find steve wozniak one of the founders of apple started out like this like many hackers his early explorations inspired him to start tinkering and inventing other hackers are like the security forces who want to defend their fortresses of information they find the chinks in the internet's armor like the heartbleed bug and patch them up before they can be used against you and of course there are hackers with less than noble intentions they can be motivated by greed fame rebellion or the desire to hurt others for cheap thrills these are the hackers that media stories have taught us to fear some of them are brilliant minds gone astray but many of these so-called hackers are just kids who run programs that they don't understand others are criminal syndicates that may know more about cheating and robbing people than creative problem solving there are also hackers who operate in morally gray areas who might steal information to expose corruption or violate privacy in the name of national security they consider what they're doing just and for the greater good while others see their actions as dishonorable and wrong but assigning labels of right and wrong or good and bad to hacking is no more productive than pinning those labels to a hammer it's how and why the hammer is used to build or to destroy that matters and that you must choose for yourself hackers like hammers are here to stay whether we like it or not i hope you got all the concepts as clear as a crystal in the next session we'll be understanding about whole vapt concept as well as phases of hacking thank you for listening have a nice day